Good evening Movie Club Strikes Back, it's me Jenny and this is another catch up review. Um, hopefully it will be slightly less scattered than my last couple of reviews. Um, I, there was quite a distance between the viewing and the reviewing um, and uh, this one I have literally just finished watching. Um, I will be discussing uh, Mad Max Wo Road Warriors, which I nearly just said Wood Warriors. I am quite tired. <laughs> um, but. I have literally just finished watching it and my quick review for it is it is a fantastic film. It is definitely worth a, watching at least once in your life. Um, it's one of those um, films that um, I was really surprised how little this has aged and I think it's because despite it being made in 1981, I believe, 81? Early 80s, um, it doesn't feel like an 80s movie um, because for one thing it's all practical effects. There's very little digital that's been put in here. It's, you know, real th flamethrowers, it's a desert setting which means that they could put, because desert um, environments are relatively cheap to film on, it means they could put a lot of effort into set and production and costuming um, and all of that is very practical, you can see that they've done a lot of work with stunt doubles and not with CGI doubles which is it's, it's very grounding, it means that in terms of visual effects this has not aged very badly, um, I think it's aged very well. Um, stylistically um, the vision of the Mad Max franchise, and this is the first in the Mad Max franchise that I've watched, um, but it's so iconic um, that it kind of it's created a genre in its own right, it's created the cyberpunk post-apocalyptic environment, um, which has been featured in many other films, the one that jumps immediately into my mind is Resident Evil 3, the film where it's again set in a desert, it's got all of these um, bastardised vehicles um, for defensive slash, um, <laughs> I don't know what the word is, scaring tactics. Um, and it's, it's become a genre of its own right, so because cyberpunk futuristic apocalyptic stories have become such an iconic imagery, um, they don't necessarily get aged by the fact that they're 80s because punk is 80s. Um, so it, it's, it's kind of a genre in its own right, so it doesn't feel like the fashion's aged that much for me. Um, I don't feel like the feel has aged that much. Um, and I was really impressed by that, and I'm really interested to see um, the 2015 Mad Max uh, film that's coming out. It's being described as a sequel and not as a reboot, which I find really, really interesting because, of course, they've cast a different character as Mad Max its entire generation forward. So it almost feels like, in a way, it's like a James Bond franchise that they're changing the actors, but they're not genuinely rebuilt. Like, I'm really interested to see how it turned out because it. There's a lot of things that could, that they, they've been done to their pinnacle in this film. The whole genre tropes, the action sequences, the card sequence have been done to the pinnacle that they can be done in my opinion. The only thing that can be polished up is prettier graphics, which I don't think are necessary, but if they can be done well, they can be done well. And um, so I'm, I'm very interested to see how the new Mad Max film will turn out. Anyway, enough about that film. Um, and the acting is pretty good throughout. Um, I found Mel Gibson could be completely unrecognisable in this. I knew it was him. I kept staring at the guy on screen and being like, is that really Mel Gibson? Really? Um, it wasn't until the second to last shot of him where he's all puffy eyed and he does his Mel Gibson grin. And I was like, oh, that is Mel Gibson. Huh. Who knew? Um, but for the rest of it, completely unrecognisable. Um, I think he did a pretty good job. Um, as pointed out, I can't remember who picked this. Um, but as was pointed out in the pic video, um, it's very visual. There isn't that much dialogue in this. Um, there isn't that much plot in this. You know, um, oil is important. Um, the kind of raiders are bad, and our kind of group that we find who have women and children are good. That's kind of basically the plot line. Oil they have, oil they want. Um, but it's very, very visual. There's a lot of key visual points within this. Um, everything from you know we um movie club strike like just did the post apocalyptic hangout uh, where we discussed um post apocalyptic tropes and that sort of thing and they even have the specific costume changes between our hero characters and our villain characters you can see the difference you know who you're rooting for because they're wearing a different color they're wearing a different style um it's almost um it's very visually clear who's who. Um, there's a lot of really interesting like little bits here and there, like the music box that kind of um, it shows a sense of humanity and a sense of um, moving above 
this sort of very feral place that the society has gone to, the fact that they can still appreciate music, they can still, um, you know, they're not just animals. Um, and there's a lot of really nice touches throughout. Um, it's a very bizarre plot in many, many ways, but it's coherent enough in a way that it's definitely entertaining and enjoyable. Um, I can't say it's a perfect film, but it's very enjoyable. Uh, one of the directorial choices that's just so fantastic is there isn't that much violence in this for a definitely R-rated movie. This is there isn't that much violence. Um, most of it is cut away from. Particularly, there's the rape scene, which is all telescoped in, and then it gets panned away. So you don't actually see any of the violence, but you know it's happening, and so it gives the audience so much more room for imagination, which is fantastic. Um, visual styles, as I said, the environment is very iconic, the costumes and the styles are very iconic, um, the grittiness and the violence is very iconic, um, but I noticed, having never watched any of the Mad Max films, I was recognising these shot styles, these, you know, big crane shots and big um, helicopter shots where you get the environment looking down on you, you see the road, um, or you see the environment um, versus looking up. Um, they have those two different directorial angles throughout where you're either looking up at someone or looking down at everyone. Um, and I found that really cool because it was like um, looking down at insects versus looking up at gods. And I really like that in this kind of post-apocalyptic world, um, how the environment has changed and how people get viewed differently, how strangers are viewed differently, how villains are viewed differently. Um, that's it. Um, <laughs> Hopefully I've said something useful, I really enjoyed this film, it's definitely worth watching once, although as I said it is R-rated, there are moments of gore, although a lot of them are cut away from. Um, if you have an active imagination um, and you don't like gory things, don't watch this film. Um, and it's a very iconic thing, as I said this is the first of the Mad Max films I've watched, I've not watched the original Mad Max and I've not watched um, the third one and obviously haven't watched the um, new one coming out. So. Um, there's a lot of stuff about this that I don't know how much of the iconic imagery is from this film individually or from the whole franchise. Um, but I really enjoyed this film. I was really impressed that I could jump in as a completely blind viewer other than cultural significance and actually understand what was going on and enjoy the story. Um, I think I will go back and watch the original films um, in preparation for the reboot and I'll probably go watch the reboot in theatres because the trailer is just so fantastically edited it sold me on it um, but I'll be really really interested to see how the modern version um, compares to the 80s um, and that's it I'm sorry I've rambled on for so long I hope I said, said something useful as always comments are very much appreciated along with likes and all of those wonderful things and um, I will see you all very soon bye guys